Hey everyone, this is Alex USA Days. So we continue with API testing. Uh, we already did a lot. So we in section nine, we already did SQL, Git, basic console command. So we're getting more and more into API testing. Today we'll do introduction of Postman. And then as we move on, we can expand on that introduction. So Postman is an API platform for building and using APIs. Postman is also great for API testing. Now, what we will be doing, we will be using the request that we used before, and we will copy that request using curl. Uh, curl is a command line tool and library for transferring data with uh, URLs. Now, we will import this curl request into Postman, and then the imported request in Postman will have the same details as original curl command. This includes the HTTP method, headers, body, and other relevant information. Postman will handle the con conversion process, and then uh, you can use Postman interface to further customize and manage your API requests. The links that you'll see, the links we're going to use today uh, in the video, and they also are available in the video description. In the last video, in video 19 for the series on becoming manual queue engineer, we talked about API in general, we talked about payloads, and today we're kind of continuing and moving to learning Postman as a tool uh, designed to work with API. Now, if you remember when we went to uh, the developer mozilla.org to the working with JSON section, there was who am I request and response that we're looking at. This request response had some payload that was carried. So we're gonna work with that payload uh, and we will start doing some testing with it. Now this is kind of introduction on installation and doing some basic tests. But as we move along, uh, we're gonna get uh, more information about testing with Postman and how to structure it. Okay, so uh, what do you want to do? Uh, this link will be in the description. So you want to go to developermozilla.org webpage. Now I'll provide this link in the description. And then once you're on the page, you want to do inspect, go to the network. Uh, so right click, hit inspect, and then go to the network tab. And once you're here, you can clear it out and do refresh. Now you will see this who am I request and the response, uh, and it will have a, a body that comes back with the country right so one we will be testing this request now the tool that we will be testing is called postman uh, there's another free tool that also has similar capabilities called insomnia so if you want to try that instead like an export on your own you're more than welcome to do that so i'll have both tools in the description the link to them as well now uh, once you're at postman the web page might change over time so it might look different for you so you can go to product download postman or just type out postman.com and then downloads uh, now once we're here click download you'll have to sign up with postman i'll show you after the installation how to do that so let's do download we will see the download here is completed uh, so we can just click on the downloaded file and there will be a pop-up asking for permission uh, if you're okaying this action now you should just hit okay now if you don't see that's fine so once you downloaded postman uh, it should start right you have this is the postman tool this is the window now the thing is there's limited capabilities with this window without signing in or creating an account so what you want to do, you want to create an account. Uh, so hit create account button and uh, you will see a way to create an account here. So you can sign up with Google, right? So hit sign up with Google and it is loaded. So it is important with Postman to have an account, otherwise you're not gonna have uh, all the capabilities. So, okay, your name, Alex, uh, USA Days, let's do that. What is your role? Let's do quality engineer tester, continue. This is fine. And now we're here. So this is the home page. We have the account here at the top. So account was created. We have more capabilities now. 
All right, there's get started. If you're interested to, you know, get started with the API and stuff, and the overview page, we can just close it all out. The first thing that you want to do uh, when you hit on the collections, you can see it's empty. You want to create a collection. That's going to be our first step. Uh, let's hit create collection. And uh, you want to give it a name. So let's give it uh, first collection. I'm going to give it a name first collection. Uh, very, very basic. All right. So now once we have the collection here, we want to add a request. So we can hit add request. Uh, and it's asking, okay, what kind of request do we want? Now, uh, one of the ways to actually have your requests, and this is one of the things that you might be using a lot as a tester, like you don't have to type everything out. If you're testing a web application that does some requests to the back end, uh, you can go into your uh, web app. So just like here. So you can go to your web app and... Uh, you can right click on the request that's coming from your web app to the server. So let's right click it, go to uh, copy, copy as curl bash, let's do that. And then paste it into uh, Postman. All right, so our request was copied. So it was, the link was copied, right? This is your endpoint, how the browser is reaching the link. So the link was copied. Uh, the method was set. So this is your get uh, method. Um, it also set all the headers. So all of the headers that you see in the request that are happening here, they were automatically set in the postman. Okay, so now we can say, uh, let's send it. And we get a status 200 back. You can see uh, we got a reply back. And because all of the headers set in the same way they were set in browser when they were copied, uh, we also got back the same response with the United States uh, that you have in the browser. Okay, we can save this request. Let's hit save. Uh, and you can select collection when you want to add it. Save and here it is. Let's delete this new request. We actually don't need it because we copied one from the web, right? And uh, you can rename this request if you want. So let's just say, who am I? Okay. Who am I? Just that, nothing else. Okay, so we have get method that asks this link, uh, this endpoint uh, to get the information. And the information is based on the header information, right? We got uh, geolocation back and the United States. So this is your first request within the tool. Uh, the same thing that the browser does, we just did in Postman. So let's add some basic testing to it, okay? So back to Postman, uh, there is a little tab called tests. You can hit on it and a lot of like basic tests, which Postman is great with it, like it allows you to learn pretty fast. So a lot of like basic requests are right here. So there are snippets that you can click on at and it will generate code within the test. Uh, one of the things that you might want to confirm if the status of the response is fine. So you want to have a test case when you're doing a request to an API endpoint and you verify that status is actually coming back as an OK status, so 200. So we can say status code is 200. So when you click on this, you can see a test automatically added. So pm.test, so this is uh, where the test starts. Then there's a test name, status code is 200. And then there is a function within the test that actually uh, executes what the test is. So pm response to have status 200. Now let's run it. And you will see there is test result right here. There's a tab now in the response uh, that is showing if the test was successful. So status code 200, that's the name of the test right here. And it actually says pass status code is 200. Now you can update this name uh, of the test. Let's say you want to say uh, is, is the status status 200. 
So uh, this is just the name of the test, and then this is a function, right? That this code is getting executed here. Let's run it. And you can see uh, the name updated. So what if we're expecting a different status? Uh, now I can go into you know the response here, in a, uh, and I can see that the status is 200. Okay. So what if I was let's say instead of getting, let's say I was creating some resource, and a code that you would expect when the resource is created would be 201. So I say that I'm expecting 201, right? And let's update the title of the test as well. Is the status 201? Let's send it. And now we can see uh, that the test actually failed. So we're expecting 201, but we got 200, right? Um, so application is still doing the same thing, right? For us, what's important here is that we're uh, doing some casting. We're, we're expecting a specific response, but the response is not there. Okay, so let's delete the whole thing. Let's add it one more time. So status code is 200. The test is added. Let's run it. Perfect. So status code is 200. This is our first test. Uh, so let's add another test also using one of the snippets here. So response uh, body JSON value check. So with this request, we're actually getting a response uh, back, right? So, and there is location United States and country ISO. So we can do that. We can actually add the test. Uh, let's hit response body, JSON value check. So here is the new test and it asks uh, to create a name. So let's verify, uh, verify country in response, right? So, okay, this is gonna be our test name. Uh, this variable, it will store the response and the, here, uh, we're looking for a specific data to come back, right? So, okay, what is that? Like, how can we actually find this data, the country data uh, was in the response? So in order to see what is stored in uh, JSON data, uh, let's comment this out over here. So uh, we can say um, console.log and let's type JSON data, all right? Let's run this. Uh, and now there is a little console at the bottom. Right here, you can see it. So it's up. Uh, I'm gonna clear it, clear the console, and let's run it again. Send. Here is this JSON data coming back, like this file, uh, this this variable that the response where was stored, we printed out into console, and here it is. Now I can see the structure. So there is uh, geolocation and then within geolocation, there is country. So you have to kind of dive down, right? Dive deeper uh, into your response uh, to see what's coming back. So let's say I'm gonna put JSON data and then dot geolocation. So let's run again. Actually, let's clear the, the console, run again. And now uh, you see, instead of getting all response, I kind of dive deeper in the, into the uh, JSON. And now we're here in this section. And only this section is stored. Okay, so here there are two options here, country and country ISO. So let's say I want to verify the country is United States. So what else I need to do? Well, I need to dive even more deeper in JSON file, right? So let's put another dot here and say uh, country. Let's clear the console, run it again. And here we are. So we're, we're getting back United States. So this file, right, we can say, okay, I want to store a specific response, right? Um, let's maybe store this as a separate uh, variable. So let's say of our uh, country data. And then country data will be equal JSON data dot geo dot country. So this was stored first the whole response, and then we kind of dived inside the response all the way down to the country to here. So this variable, uh, the, the data uh, is stored uh, for the country, United States, right? So we confirm that using the console, 
here's come back now we can add our task saying okay so let's pm expect and here uh, for the country data so we expect country data to be equal to and what are we looking for uh, we're looking for United States copy so highlight control C or command C if you're on Mac to copy go to the uh, test and control V or command V uh, if you're Mac to paste so I just pasted this value and let's run it again okay now look at that I'm gonna close the console I'm going back to the test results now we have two uh, tests running both of them are passing one is we're verifying that the actual response code is 200 and the other one is verifying that the country is correct so let's say we're going to say verify country let's let's rename it uk country uk is in response right so let's say i want to see uk back and instead of united states i'm going to put uk here so i update the whole test i update the test name uh, send it one more time Verify country UK in response, assertion error expected United States to deeply equal UK. So it was looking for uh, UK, but actually got United States back, right? Because our request, there's nothing changed here. So same dot data is coming back. We updated the test. So uh, let's update the test name to get a proper response. So uh, verify country uh, United uh, United States in response and expect country data is equal to uh, United States. Okay, so let's run one more time. Okay, test is passing uh, for the code, test is passing for the value within the body, the response body. Okay, so uh, I think we're good. So this is our first couple of, cu couple of our tests. Uh, based on the API the request that we've already seen before. Uh, so what we're doing now, we created a request. Uh, we copied actually this request from the web. We pasted it here, important here in Postman. Uh, we did the request, we get a specific body back, we get some status back, we get information back, right? And now we added two tests around this request, perfect. Um, you can save it or control s to quick save save it request is saved uh, great last thing that you want to probably have if you're doing requests and you know that they're working properly is to save the response as example so you can kind of come back to it if something stops working you can actually see what was in the response so i can say uh, save as an example here or I just right click it uh, add example um, but let me just save it. So save as an example, and the example is added. Uh, okay, that's it. it. It's actually just saved. So I can rename it, say example response. Uh, who am I response? Now, anytime, let's say I run request and I get something else here, and I don't, I'm not sure what I want to see here. I have some stored data that I can reference to and it will show in the example that's actually what was coming back okay all right uh perfect so thanks everyone for watching this was alex you say days and bye bye